Hello everyone, welcome to the d Hard House. My name is Alicia, and I'm your host of this crafty podcast channel here on YouTube. So I'm coming to you from my home in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State in the United States. Uh, if you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad you could be here with me today. Um, Today is January 30th of 2022. Yeah, January is almost over. We still have, well, the rest of today and tomorrow, and it'll be February, which seems really quick. It always seems really quick, the month of January. It's like there's all this um, lead up at the end of the year with the end of the year holidays, New Year, you know, there's Chinese New Year, and there's all this ramp up, and then it seems like January goes by in the blink of an eye. Just all, all that stuff going on. Super fast. Anyway, <laughs> um, I am steeping some cinnamon tea. Oh, it's called Harney and Sons hot cinnamon spice mm, delicious I ordered it off of Amazon <laughs> um, but yeah I love cinnamon tea and this tea has just the right amount of sweetness in it that I don't feel like I need to add honey or Splenda I like most of my hot tea, I like have a little bit of sweetness to it. I also like sweet coffee. <laughs> um, but there are some exceptions like Earl Grey. I will not add sweetener to. I, I do like that to be just like a straight uh, Earl Grey tea, nothing added. But if I'm just having black tea, oh yeah, I'm adding sweetener to that. <laughs> Splenda or honey, something to make it sweet. Anyway, if you enjoy uh, cinnamon tea with a bit of sweetness in it, I highly recommend this one. It's delicious. Oh yeah, that's good. So this is my end of the month video because it's pretty much the end of the month. <laughs> Tomorrow is the last day. Um, but today's Sunday. It's a good day to record. Um, Mondays are usually pretty busy with work, so I'm just going to do it today because honestly, am I going to finish anything else between now and tomorrow? No. <laughs> so I have a few things out on the table here that I want to share with you. Things I did finish, things in progress, and of course, I cast on something new. <laughs> so I want to take you through uh, what I'm working on. I also acquired something new, so I want to share that with you. And at the end of the video, I will be um, announcing a giveaway. So every month I give something away. <laughs> so I will be drawing a winner from the December video uh, and I will be announcing that winner at the end of this video. Then I will be announcing the next giveaway for uh, for January. So all that information will come at the end of the video. So let me start with what I finished this month, <laughs> which was a pair of socks. I finished knitting them like two weeks ago, like half halfway through January, but I did not <laughs> close the toe until this morning when I realized, hey, I should actually finish those socks so I can show them off on the podcast. <laughs> so that's what I did. Um, but yeah, these are some socks knit out of hand spun yarn. So I spun this yarn 
it is a what is the blend of this yarn oh there's a tag over there so it's got merino merino bamboo and nylon in it which I think will be good for socks so I knit these cuff down because that's my preferred method I love a twisted German cast on I have not mastered the art of binding off in ribbing to where uh, basically it'll match a twisted German cast on it's either way too tight or way too loose and I cannot for the life of me seem to figure out that Goldilocks region so I just like to knit my socks cuff down because then I get what I want <laughs> it's not a big deal um, uh, these are knit one purl one ribbing all the way around so it's all ribbing up here and I did a heel flap and gusset and continued the ribbing down the top of the foot and I just love how these socks turned out the hand spun yarn is beautiful I love how the colors kind of played out in these socks I think it looks quite unique right which is part of the appeal of the hand spun yarn <laughs> so uh, these were knit up for my husband so after I photograph them and weigh them and compute yardages, uh, then they will go in his sock drawer. I am a little bit concerned about these socks. Um, I had knit a pair of hand spun socks for myself last year out of a different blend from a different uh, dyer. Okay. Um, but those socks have shrank, so I can't put them on my feet anymore. They're too small. So I think I wore them three times, so they went through the wash three times. And now they don't fit. And I'm smiling, because if I wasn't smiling, I'd be crying. Yeah. Uh, so those socks were not a merino nylon blend I think it was like merino and silk maybe some bamboo I don't know but I thought it was gonna be fine and it wasn't right so I the way I wash my socks is by using the washing machine uh, we use completely cold water uh, just regular laundry detergent and we run them on not quite a normal cycle like I toned down the spin cycle and then we air dry them we hang them up on the line and they just air dry and then we will run them through the dryer for like 15 minutes on air dry so there's no heat uh, but to just kick out um, the main thing is the dog hair right uh, we have a dog there's hair everywhere especially near your feet <laughs> uh, we usually don't wear shoes in the house we usually take them off on our way in so that we're walking in the house either in our socks or barefoot um, sometimes I wear slippers like right now I'm wearing my I've got my hand knit socks and my slippers on because my toes are just extra cold right now uh, but otherwise you know so our socks pick up dog hair I mean among other things right they pick up some dirt and all that great stuff and the wash is the primary way of getting all that stuff out but there's always a dog hair still left when I'm taking out of the washer and I'll um, work the socks out when I'm hanging them on the line I shape them so when they dry they pretty much have the sock shape right and when I'm doing that I'm working with the material there's just dog hair everywhere <laughs> right um, 
anyway, so we'll put it in the dryer, but on air dry setting, so there's no heat, okay? Um, and then, you know, the lint trap catches a lot of dog hair. And then we just have socks that seem a little bit extra clean because <laughs> they went through that extra phase. Uh, but yeah, just putting them in the washing machine was enough. I didn't even put them through the air dry cycle. I said, no, 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 uh, just line dry them and I'll wear them from the line. And they still, they shrink in the wash. So this is a different blend um, and from a different dyer. I spun it the same way, but I'm curious. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope that this works out, that these socks don't mega shrink, uh, but we'll see. I mean, we love our hand, nuts, hand knit socks and um, we wear them all the time. They are our primary socks and I really don't want to have to hand wash, you know, a handful of pairs. Uh, because really what we need for ease with our lifestyles is just to be able to put them in the washing machine. Hanging them up, up to dry is a chore, right? It's not like just toss them in the dryer and hitting it, turning it on. That does take some time. So then add in hand washing, adds even more time. Yeah. Anyway. I'm pretty sad about that whole deal. But I did learn something <laughs> and we'll see how this goes. So my hope is that Michael will get more than three wears out of this pair of socks. We'll see. Um, I do have more of this fiber. It's the same blend, but a different colorway sitting on the shelf. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, and if this goes well, my intention for that other fiber are to spin for more socks. So we'll see. This will be an experiment. Um, this is a learning process, which is part of what I appreciate about crafting is that I feel like this is a whole avenue in which to learn a lot of things. And I enjoy learning. So I learned that that blend was not good for socks. I did learn that. <laughs> we'll see about this blend. So that is the only thing I finished. Um, I do have, so that was in this bag. So I do have quite a bit still left over. In fact, I have my scale right here. Um, let's measure it in grams. Cause that's what I usually do. I have 59 grams still left of this yarn. <laughs> that's amazing. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. So these will go up on the scrap yarn pegboard. Uh, I will need to take pictures of this pair of socks to post on my Ravelry project and mark it as finished because it is officially now finished. <laughs> Um, a work in progress that I have been showing you since November or December. I don't know. I know I definitely showed you in December, uh, but it's a sweater. I have the pattern right here. I have this pattern tucked in a notebook because, um, well, this pattern, the way it is written, I am needing to rewrite things for me to understand. Right. So the pattern is this beautiful jacket that's kind of Chanel inspired. And the name is Mellow. Uh, can you see that? <laughs> Mellow by Camilla Vaud. And I did pay for this pattern. I bought it on Ravelry. 
I'll link it down below in the description box. I, just to recap, I did uh, use different yarn than what's recommended. What's recommended is all either, oh no, they're all mohair merino blends. I don't have any mohair in my stash and I don't, I'm not really interested in mohair. I have sensitive skin and allergies and I just don't think from what I've heard about mohair, I don't think I would like it. I think it would bother me <laughs> to wear. So, so I did yarn substitutions, which meant I did modify this pattern a little bit to account for the different gauge I was getting. And that already makes a pattern more difficult, right? <laughs> um, and not necessarily like, if, went from easy to hard, but it's an extra step that you have to do along the way because my stitch count is different. <laughs> I'm not just following a different size with stitch counts already written in here. I am modifying the stitch counts. So I am doing that at every step. So that has added more work to this project. Um, but even with that, just the way it's written, it's not for a beginner, okay? It's for someone who needs to have a, a bit of experience with decreasing, increasing kind of how a cardigan is shaped um, and, and knowing how to read ahead in a pattern and kind of see what's coming and make sense of it. Um, now the way I make sense of it is by drawing, I draw pictures and I'll rewrite what's said here in my own words. I have, I like to do check boxes. So I have a page full of check boxes. Uh, it helps me keep track of uh, how long a repeat is and how many repeats to do and, and what's being done at each stage, right? So anyway i i am very much in love with this finished product um it's just it seems like i'm doing more work to get there than i thought i would have to it is what it is right so um my yarn is detached from my project because I'm at one of those points where the yarn has come off. So um, I have just this one ball of the silk. So it has come down in size quite a bit, but you can see I'm not close to running out. So I still have lots of this color. I'm on, excuse me, the second ball of each of these. This is the second ball. So I've used up one whole ball of each of these colors. And I'm still working on the second balls, which is awesome. Um, so the silk is scrumptious lace, which is um, silk merino blend. And these two are Knit Picks palette. Um, their colors are mist and I think ash. Yes, mist and ash are the two grays. This is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Look like I got silk, merino, and Highland wool in this garment. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I love the colors. I just love it. It's amazing. So this is going to be a little bit awkward to show, but uh, it's knit from the bottom up, okay? So, and it is a cardigan like I'm wearing here with this green one. So it is being knit flat because you come around here, turn around and go back. So it is being knit flat, but the pattern lends itself to being knit flat. <laughs> if you did knit this in the round, you would have to do a bunch of purling. But knitting it flat means it's all knitting. <laughs> so, that is uh, a plus side of this pattern, right? Um, okay, so I did make it 
to the uh, uh, the bottom of the sleeve here. So what what has happened now is I've cast off a few stitches for the armhole and now the stitches are divided into the right front panel, left front panel, and then the back side. And so each of those are going to be knit separately. I have finished the right front panel and the yarn is detached now. So, <laughs> so the stitches are not kept live, they're bound off, which is nice. So I still need to do the left front and the back side. See, this is going to be really hard to show. So there's the bottom edge on the bottom. This is the front. See the split here? And then here's the top of the the left side. Yeah, it's the the right front is as you're looking at the card again, not my right side, but as you're looking at me, it'd be this side. Whatever. So here's the front here. Yeah, it looks pretty awesome. Uh, I have my stitches on needles. I'm using circular needles as holders. I love it so much. So yeah, I am making progress. Last time I showed this to you, I was here on that stitch marker. So I doubled it again. So it turns out that point last month was halfway between the bottom and the armhole. So I've made it up to the armhole, plus I've done one of the front panels. So yeah, basically with reading ahead, I just need to, like I said, knit the other front panel, knit the back. Um, and knit the sleeves. There are sleeves and then um, finishing, sew or knit together. So, yeah. Which should add a little bit of extra, um, what's the word I'm looking for, like structure, um, by, by sewing the edges together, it'll give it a little bit of extra strength in those areas, which is not how I have constructed most of the sweaters I've made. Um, the sweaters I have made have been just knit the whole thing without any sewing at all or piecing together. Uh, so that will be new for me. So that will also probably slow me down. So I'm doing quite a few new things here. I did a yarn substitution. I modified the pattern to account for my different gauge. And I'm going to have to do sewing. So uh, the fact that I find this project like a lot of work, it kind of slow makes sense because I'm doing quite a few things I haven't done before. So they're, they're new and when I'm doing something new, I tend to double, triple check my work <laughs> before proceeding because I don't have that confidence. And so that's just inherently slower. Uh, but all in all, I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. I like the yarn I chose. I like the colors. I like the size. I think it's going to fit well. And yeah, I just kind of had to find my rhythm. And part of my rhythm was kind of rewriting the pattern in my own words so I could make sense of it and get that rhythm. But yeah, I'm making good progress. So my goal is to finish this cardigan in February. 
get it off my needles in February, have a finished cardigan to show you next month. That's my goal. While we're on the topic of knitting, I did cast on another sock because I finished that pair, right? <laughs> uh, I, I love having socks going. It, uh, it's my comfort knit, I guess. So this is being knit out of Patton's Croy and that hobby yarn that came into my stash last month. In fact, here we go. So the gray is Patton's Croy. That colorway is gray marl. So Patton's Croy. Tried and true. Love. I love this sock yarn. Holds up really well, even through the washer and the air dry cycle of the dryer. <laughs> Socks made out of this yarn are built to last. Uh, and then this beautiful bright blue is uh, Mayflower one class, which I bought off of Hobby. And the color is a number. It's color 31, if that is helpful for you. Um, I think Hobby was discontinuing this yarn. Uh, so I do not know where else to get it. But I imagine there is a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. So I am working on a new design because I need that creative outlet. So I am still working on writing the pattern, but I wanted to play with color and texture. So can I get closer to the camera here? It's not going to focus, which is a bummer. But I think it looks a really, uh, it looks really neat um, in person. So I will get, you know, pictures at some point, but I'm not finished with the first sock yet. So this, <laughs> the leg here, which it is a shorter sock. Um, the leg here, I think I ripped out and knit five or six times, um, because I just, you know, I try something and it didn't quite turn out how I thought it was going to, and then I experiment with something else, so then I'd rip back, do this new thing I figured, and then try something else, and just didn't work out the way I thought it would, and... Um, anyway, so I finally got what I wanted, <laughs> something I really like. So it plays with color and texture. And so I will be working on this into February. And I am looking into knitting a second pair, but doing a longer leg. So doing more of the patterning and playing with different color combinations. So I want to do that before I ask. I think for this pattern, I will ask for testers. <laughs> um, so uh, you can look forward to that in my next video. Um, so if you're interested in test knitting color and texture, keep me on your radar okay um but i want to play with a a longer cuff uh more pattern repeats and some different colors because i do have a marled color here uh, with a solid so i do want to play with some other options before i settle on a pattern because i want to see how that will translate with different combinations so at some point in the future, 
I will be calling for test knitters. And then shortly after that, you know, releasing a pattern, which will be fun. And then there was fiber prep. <laughs> so I haven't done any spinning this month. I did the tiniest amount on my drop spindle, but um, yeah, it's been, it's been a tough month. <laughs> it's been a tough month uh, working from home. And, you know, this is my craft space where I can um, basically just spread out, right? I can use this table space for uh, ironing fabric and cutting fabric, and I can um, use this space with my blending board to blend fiber, which is what I did. Um, I can make this room as messy as I need to, <laughs> where I just, you know, throw projects in here to get them out of the living room. And, and you know, this is, this is a, a chaotic craft space. But while working from home, this space is my office which is where I teach from remotely. And so it can't be this, you know, chaotic craft space if it's doubling as my organized workspace. So it's been really challenging to find the space to do um, what I want to do, uh, to put that shortly. So it has been challenging. In the grand scheme of challenges during the pandemic, mine ranks extremely low. <laughs> okay, let me just acknowledge. Um, I am very privileged to have uh, a space to work from from home. Um, and the fact that I have to sacrifice some of my crafts in order to do that is not a big deal. Okay. Um, do I find it annoying? Absolutely. But, uh, there are folks out there making much bigger sacrifices than I am. Like huge sacrifices people are making to make it work through the pandemic. And there are plenty of people who are really struggling and not able to make it work. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge that that is the reality. Okay, so I've been trying to balance things in my life, and so I was able to find time to do some fiber prep, which I'm pointing out. I'm going to show you in a moment. <laughs> um, but I could not also make time this month to spin it. So my hope is that in February, I will find time to spin this. So in January, I prepped it. In February, I'd like to spin it. Not a big deal. So I dyed up some Cary Hill wool and, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> sorry. I dyed up some Cary Hill uh, fiber that I purchased in, it must have been 2020, yeah. And it was during the pandemic because I remember us having face masks on when I went to go pick it up. Yep. And I washed it last summer in 21 and started combing and dyeing and playing around with it. And now I've come up with this project to make out of a lot of it. So, excuse me. So I dyed up four colors and I've blended them. So I did, uh, I made some little samples, which is fun, uh, of different ways I could blend the fiber together. But essentially that is the color I'm going for. So like this teal green kind of look, which I like on me. Um, so 
move these out of the way. So I blended using my blending board uh, some light green with teal. So I put down uh, one of the colors, right? I put down a layer of light green and then a layer of teal. And then I used my Diz and I pulled it off the blending board. And so I created, um, these are some small bits on the top, but I take those off then. Right, so I've got roving here. <laughs> And so this is going to be one ply of the yarn. And then for the other one, I mixed dark green with black. And this will be the other ply. So I'm going to create a two ply yarn. And like I showed you, after I knit it up, we'll look something like this. So I picked out a pattern um, to make out of this. And so now that I know the pattern, I know the yarn. And so now it's, it, it, you know, I had to think about the different colors that I wanted to use and how to combine them and achieve what I wanted in the yarn. So this is what I'm going with. So I did all that in January, which honestly is enough. I don't need to also start the spinning. Um, all that planning takes time and thinking and what do I want? What do I need? What am I doing? <laughs> um, yeah, so so light green with teal here and then dark green with black here. And it's just going to be scrumptious. So I've got this heaping full fabric box here from the Dollar Tree, heaping full fabric box from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and so this has been sitting on this table here for a few weeks, which is so funny because my desk for work is right here. You can see the brown drawers here as part of that desk. So I, I sit here for work lecturing and the camera points this way. And so sometimes <laughs> the students can catch a glimpse of this fiber <laughs> in the background. <laughs> no one has asked me about it, but I can only imagine what they are thinking when they see this behind me. Like, what is that? <laughs> Hilarious. If someone would ask me, I would tell them. <laughs> But yeah, so I have not done um, any spinning this month of consequence, uh, but I did do fiber preparation and planning for a spin for a knitting project, which makes me very happy. So I would love to spin um, this up next month, like I said. So that's that. Um, in fact, with my spin, it's back in the camera view. Um, who would like to, you know, spin along with me in like a live video stream on YouTube here? Um, if I were to find a, a day and a time that worked to kind of set this up where um, I'm here spinning on this project and you're where you are <laughs> spinning on your project or knitting on your project and we're in a live stream together um, communicating would that be something you're interested in seeing here on the channel is um, a live a live stream of that live interaction um, about spinning let me know in the comments below if that is something you're interested in. It's something I've thought about doing. I just uh, haven't done it. But if you are interested, let me know. Because that will help 
motivate me to figure out how to do a live stream on YouTube. <laughs> so I did acquire a couple of things this month. One of them is the Fleece and Fiber source book, which I did not realize was this thick. I believe it. Okay, absolutely. There is so much out there, but whenever I've seen people show it on the podcast, on YouTube, and all that great stuff, it seems like it's pretty light and not that thick. They're just like, boom, hey, look at this book. Great. And then, and it goes down. Okay. Well, this thing is an inch, an inch thick. Okay. Um, it, it feels like a textbook. Um, all right, this is one of my bigger textbooks, but just for comparison, okay. <laughs> it's a book, man. It's a book. It's proper. It's a proper resource book, right? Um, just in the, the size and weight alone, there's a lot in here, okay? I have barely cracked the spine on this thing. Um, it's amazing. So what everyone says about it is true. It's an amazing resource. So I was looking up, oh, I don't know, Cary Hill Fiber the other day. I don't know where that page went, so I'm going to look at, re look it up. On page 211, if you happen to have this book as well. Look at how adorable. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't imagine seeing a whole field full of Cary Hill sheep with those black markings on their face. It would be the highlight of, of a year for me, to be honest. Um, they're adorable. But anyway, uh, so this is one of my new acquisitions, this book. So it's been sitting out on our coffee table. And I just picking it up every now and again and looking up something new, which is kind of neat. So it does have, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's, it does say on the cover that this isn't just sheep. It's got a whole list here. Uh, sheep, goats, alpacas, llamas, the cunas, the cunas, uh, camels, bison, musk oxen, yaks, and more. Okay, so, uh, incredible. I just had to move the setup to the other side of the room. <laughs> I'm just on the other side of, um, right here's a shelf that's next to the table I was just sitting at, so I just went on the other side of it, <laughs> but yeah. So this is my other new acquisition. So this is a, uh, this is an Inkle loom. It's quite large. <laughs> um, it's so large it stands on the floor, but, um, but yeah, so it's got uh, tensioning here and, um, Yeah, it was posted on Facebook, um, and it was a good price, and th it, this is what I got. It didn't come with any, um, oh my gosh, I know the word for this, shuttles, <laughs> did not come with any shuttles or anything, um, so I will have to figure that out, but like I said, um, the lady selling this just wanted to get rid of it. Um, she wanted to downsize from this to a table ink loom, so she just 
wanted this gone. I'm assuming she kept, um, she's got whatever shuttles and things because she's still using them on her next Inca loom. Uh, but she said this was handmade, um, not by her, not by anyone she knows. She bought it from um, someone secondhand, and so now I have it second, secondhand, and yeah, I just said, you know, I'll give it a home, and I've been watching lots of videos about Inkle loom weaving, so it should be an interesting rabbit hole to dive down. <laughs> If I didn't have time for spinning in January, yeah, well, uh, we'll find time sometime this year. Maybe this summer when I'm not teaching. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is new um, to the house. I've actually been keeping it in the guest room because, well... I can't clutter up this space like I normally would because I need to uh, be working from this room. So instead, I'm cluttering up the guest room. So, whatever. <laughs> so it's time for the giveaway. So I pulled up my laptop. Oh, that's another acquisition. I got a new laptop. This is my old one an amazing awesome laptop the things run so much quicker on it yeah um but yeah this is like a is this 10 years old this laptop my grandfather bought it for me as a gift for um for graduate school it was 10 years ago oh my gosh she has been wonderful, uh, but it's time for an upgrade. So that's, uh, anyway, it's a tangent. Uh, so I got out my laptop and I picked a, I used a YouTube random comment picker and I picked a random comment from the December makes video. And so the winner, oh yeah, the prize is a pattern off of Ravelry. I can't remember the dollar amount I said. What did I say, like up to $10 or something, US dollars? Probably, probably what I said. Let's just go with it. <laughs> I'll watch the video and make sure I get that right. Uh, but the, so the random winner um, that was chosen, the prize is a uh, any pattern you want off of Ravelry, I will buy it for you and gift it to you up to a 10 US dollar value. And so it could be any pattern by anybody as long as it's available on Ravelry because I already got an account set up. It's really easy to just pay and gift it to somebody. So the winner <laughs> of the prize is Linda C. Um, the prompt was about your sort of goals for 2020, 2022. If you make them, uh, you know, what do you want to do this year kind of thing. And Linda C says, my goal each year is always to work from stash. Somehow my stash never gets smaller. It just keeps getting bigger. Amen, sister. So <laughs> that's always my goal too. And I have a room full of stuff <laughs> and a new Inca loom. So Linda C, um, please send me uh, an email. Uh, my email is down below in the description box, or you can send me a message on Ravelry if that's easier. My username on Ravelry is Aliddy Knits2. I'll also put that down below. And let me know what pattern you would like for your prize. Um, name of the designer, name of the pattern, um, provide a link to the website, wh whatever is easiest, and I will get that sent to you right away, which is the beauty of an online prize is that we don't have to wait for postage or things like that. So um, send me an email or Ravelry message letting me know which pattern you would like, and I will get that for you ASAP. 
Uh, so the giveaway this month will be the same thing, actually. I think um, it's really nice to help support uh, pattern designers out there and uh, help build your library. So maybe not uh, more stash, even though we can all use more of that, but <laughs> I will help facilitate you working down your stash by helping you get more patterns. So, uh, so for this month, I would also like to give away a pattern prize. Um, same deal. Um, any pattern off of Ravelry that you would like, I will purchase for you and gift it to you through Ravelry. Okay. So the prompt for this giveaway is going to be about the live stream. I want to know about the live stream. Do you want to see or be able to interact? Maybe not just watch it later, but be able to interact with me on a live stream. If so, would you like to see spinning, knitting, crocheting? any and all of the above <laughs> um you know what would you like to see in a live stream and would you like a live stream or do you just like watching recordings later because both are great <laughs> and some folks prefer one or the other so let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see live streams come to this channel if so what do you want to see in a live stream um, and I do have a gorgeous five-year-old black Labrador who could make an appearance as well. So if you want to see Marjorie, <laughs> let me know, uh, and we'll find a way to work her into the live stream as well. Um, and if you're just not that interested in live streams, if you just like the recorded and edited content, let me know that too, because I definitely know how to do that. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope that your January went well, that you made some progress towards your goals. If you set some goals, I hope that you found some downtime to relax and unwind some point in the month, hopefully more than once. And I look forward to February. So stay safe, be well, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye everyone.